On deck, we have a Q&A session with Lori Grindle and Frank Copley. And of course, the big launch. Not going to spoil it for anybody, but I hope it's a big success. Well, we are at T minus four minutes. We're less than four minutes away from launch. Uh, how how excited, excited are you guys? Pretty excited. <laughs> it's been a long road. There's been a lot of people work a lot of years on this project. Yeah, I mean, what's it feel? I mean, to finally see this launch, and it, it's only a minute and 40 seconds, correct? Right, but it's behind me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just must be, a, you know, you work for so many years on a project to see for just a short amount of time, but it's it's you know, it's, it's important data that you're collecting out of this. Yeah, where Lori and I work at Dryden Flight Research Center, we, most of our work is surrounded airplanes and so you typically we get a lot of flights we get a lot more feedback on whether our experiments are working or not right and when you have to wait four years for a 90 second flight it creates a lot of anxiety so uh, we're certainly anxious to see this this go you know go well whatever companies design systems that take humans into orbit they're going to need some kind of abort capability so I think that this technology will transition to other companies in the future um, although their, their designs may be slightly different I think a lot of companies will benefit from it but the cool thing about this design is this is state-of-the-art technology that we're seeing today absolutely yeah there's there's several things about this the system that are sort of improvements over what we did during the Apollo era and you know all of them together really give us the uh, the extra benefit to try to protect the astronauts during the ascent. So White Sands is a very special uh, place. It's a, it's a special uh, facility in the United States for doing rocket testing. They have a range here that runs 100 miles long by 40 miles wide. So you can do these rocket tests in a really safe environment. And if the rockets should steer off course, in some cases, the longer rockets, they'll actually blow them up and make sure they stay within the range. In our case, our rocket doesn't have enough energy to leave the range, so it's safe to be here. The other reason we selected this is not, this paddleboard test we probably could have done in many different places. But the follow-on test, the ascent abort test, actually we're going to fly the vehicle up to above 100,000 feet and do aborts as if we were in traveling to orbit. Uh, those, those tests need a much bigger range, and so that's the reason that really that White Sands was selected here. And so the question though about uh, if there's any risk to the public, basically they've chosen this area for us uh, based on a lot of analysis, of, of really a lot of analysis that tells us um, how far the last can go if anything happens at all. And so this uh, four mile uh, uh, radius is, uh, is a clear zone, and so we're all safe right here, and so is everyone on the base. What we've been, you know, hearing while we've been sitting here is that uh, we're still a, a go for launch. So, in spite of uh, the wind that we're experiencing here, it's the wind really at the launch site that matters. There's two two types of wind that we're worried about: the wind on the ground, the surface winds, and the winds aloft. And so, those are the two areas of, of most uh, concern, I guess, for us. Um, but in both cases, we're still a go for launch. So, in spite of the wind we're experiencing, we're still in, in good shape. Well, we were really worried about the surface winds for this set here earlier yeah. today because yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you were here at three o'clock this morning. It was it was pretty bad. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, with the status of the uh, constellation program, why are we still doing this test, or why is this test still important? Okay. Is that what mine? Yeah. If you want, well, yeah, you sure. start it and I'll okay. jump in. Well, I was going to say that I think it picks right up on the answer that Brent gave to his very first question um, about you know applying, uh, uh, giving the data out to uh, to the commercial public and everything. Uh, basically, we always will need this information unless we want to, to just uh, be satisfied here on the Earth and not do any exploration of any kind or. Uh, you know, we're going to need to know uh, this kind of information and have this kind of data. It uh, will enhance our technologies and, and all of that. And so, uh, independent of Constellation's uh, status, I think the information is good, the, the flight data is good, and, and will help us uh, for our future. So, is, I mean, is it fair to say if, can if Constellation hadn't been canceled, the technology is still, it's always useful. Whether, whether a program's going on or not or whatever, we still need the data to absolutely. move forward techno technologically. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I think it's probably a fair way to say is we're sort of potentially delaying some of the human exploration. We're not. We're certainly not ending it. So, right. uh, you know, the technology we need to advance this, and it's it's now's the right time. We're ready to go. This this test has been planned for quite a long time. You certainly wouldn't want to have stopped this test because we were ready to go. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah, this is great. This is, is going to be cool. You see a live look at the pad. I'm so nervous. Wow. <laughs> Launch Complex 32E at White Sands. It's amazing. It's a beautiful uh, backdrop there. The skyline's. Beautiful. I can't believe we're actually this close to launch. <laughs> <laughs> this, this kind of reminds me of the Ares 1X flight uh, test that we saw back at Kennedy. Three, two, one, one, T minus one, one minute. minute. Wow. T minus one minute. 
Franklin, can you believe it? Man, this is this is great. This I'm is the first for me, you know? Yeah, I'm, it's a first for all of us for this. This is yeah. incredible. Well, you know what? I haven't even seen the shuttle launch yet. Well, well, I haven't I, seen the shuttle launch? I haven't, haven't seen the shuttle oh, launch. We'll have to make sure that happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Aries 1X well, was my we, first. We'll be down for the last shuttle launch for the last show. Absolutely. Oh, man, this is so cool. Even Brent's getting excited right now. I'm so glad I have this platform to stand on. <laughs> yeah. I've never seen Brent so nervous in my entire life. I mean, look at him, he's shaking. And I'll echo T minus 10 seconds on my mark. Mark. Five, four, three, two, one. Launch, launch, launch. Wow. It's not descending. It's the the winds are carrying it. You sure you're not in that capsule right now? <laughs> <laughs> Little CV hang time. You know, and it was cool. The different stages. Everybody yeah. that the, you know, they're you reacting know to different. Yeah, re yeah. Re reacting at the different times. And it just landed. Yeah. Perfect. Let's go back. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. Nice. Wow. I, I, I'm still kind of stunned, actually. <laughs> Even still, they're still congratulating each other. That's right. They, they all know they played a role. Yep. Well, this uh, broadcast has come to an end. Uh, we again want to thank you, and you're watching NASA Edge. An inside and outside look. At all things NASA. A little, little stereo action there. That was nice.